13,000 pounds, pretty much on the nose. This is a Montana 362 back here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. We sold it originally to its one and only original owner as part of a truck and trailer package deal. And these folks were self-admittedly the type that every year or two likes to always kind of update and have the newest things. They swapped this out for a front porch side patio Keystone Fusion toy hauler. They were happy within the Keystone family. They were happy here with Halet RV and decided if they were going to update and upgrade, this would be the place and Keystone would be the brand. First thing you notice when you step inside, it's been very well kept. You know, not only is it late model, because the folks actually used it quite a bit. But they were really good people who took really good care of their stuff and it shows. Now this is an interesting floor plan. Um, there's similar things out there but there's not another one exactly like the Montana High Country 362 here at Halet RV. It, it's, it's got a very interesting rear room. This could be a couple's camper with a rear den. It could be a family camper with a rear bunkhouse. It could be something in between, or it could change on the fly. Like, let's say it's mostly the two of you, but maybe grandpa and grandma have a grandkid, or you have adult children, you want your adult children and their kid to join you sometime. This floor plan can, on the fly, change to meet all those different wants, needs, and styles of camping. But what's kind of cool here is it gives us, uh, like, a normal Montana living room, even though it could have a bunk room in the back, the living room doesn't suffer. Like, you still got these big, tall slides loaded with windows here. Power theater recliners and a freestanding table and chairs is something that is, at a glance, you think, well, that would make this more of a couple's camper than a bunkhouse. But you can still sit four people here, just like you sit four people at a booth. You don't need a booth in this floor plan for sleeping capacity, which you'll see when we get to the rear room. You'll also find that this thing has a pretty stellar kitchen arrangement. You've got good prep space uh, broken up between three different uh, solid surface countertop sections. Plenty of drawers right here for the campsite chef. And if you take a look at the uh, sink inserts, first of all, notice how the sink is all the way to one side of this island, which means that even when the sink is in use, you still have a nice little prep space or a place to put like a little dish drying rack right here. But you also notice how you have a normal sink and then a big farm sink next to it. Instead of giving you one or the other, that's a neat little Montana thing. They give you both styles. You've got a bigger fan up here with a rain sensor so you can get some rainy day airflow going on. Plus, you got the residential fan up top. Another thing on this one is that the, uh, the main air conditioning unit also has a 16,500 BTU heat pump built into it. And you see that down below, there's an electric space heating fireplace right there. So you've always got plenty of heating in this RV even before you fire up the, uh, the big propane furnace. Now the TV's on a swing arm so it can swivel around and that kind of frames up it's easy to miss but you've got a large pantry right in the main kitchen section right here. That's a 12 cubic foot travel and friendly gas electric fridge freezer and you can see how you've got an extra countertop extension here to really maximize our total prep space. A uh, larger residential sized uh, microwave oven and then if we look up here, there's little accent lights above a couple of the kitchen cabinets. Like you see one above the entertainment, you see one over here next to the even larger pantry area. But what's really nice is they actually uh, use just like bright white accent lights and you'll see more of that down below our little entry area shoe garage right there. Um, as opposed to the blue lights that are very common in the business, they went with a far more neutral white light because it just acts like a nice bright, uh, you know, sort of makes the RV look open and, and, and feel larger. Now, one of the interesting aspects of this floor plan is that the bedroom had to basically be shrunk to give you the large rear den and full-size living room. So what that means is your washer-dryer closet is not in the bedroom, it's actually down here. But if you don't need that, just like the previous owners didn't use it, you have a ridiculous amount of storage space here. And something the previous owners did, and they, they kept it with them, there are portable dishwashers. What they did is they used these washer dryer hookups and those power outlets right there. They placed a portable dishwasher in on this shelf so that uh, they'd have a way to easily clean big batches of dishes without constantly doing small batches of dishes in their kitchen sink. And then they just used the washer dryer um, drains, basically, to, to, to handle all the water needs and draining for that washer or uh, dishwasher. It's, it's kind of genius, actually. The private rear den on this floor plan is really a signature calling card. There are several brands, like the Open Range 427 on paper is very similarly laid out, 
But this one has more of the ability to convert into a rear den and or living space as opposed to just a rear bunkhouse. Like you see that you got a flip up overhead bunk, but down below for daytime comfort, you have another of those power theater recliners across the rear wall and skirted by a pair of breeze windows, mind you, is a trifold sleeper sofa. And what's really cool about this is it makes it good for not just sleeping kids. Um, if you have like, hey, our, our mother-in-law stays with us or something like that, or my dad's getting old and we want to go camping, but we don't want to just leave him at home or something like that. You know, I, I, I hope, and I don't mean that in derogatory, I hope that when I reach that point, my kid wants to take me camping and buys an RV that fits me. Wouldn't that be nice? Man. But uh, this is a trifold sleeper sofa that can sleep an adult. So it's not just a kid sleeper. And there's nothing that says you couldn't just leave the bed open and use it as a rear bedroom. And then all you have to do to close the slides is put the bed away. I mean, it, it works for a lot of different purposes. Plus, something Montana's always good about on their rear sleeper sofas is putting side stands with outlets so that even if you're a CPAP user, you're good to go. We've got rolling uh, nightshades all the way around all of these. And then over here, this slide out's very interesting. It's got what I call a big kid bunk above that could easily be used for just generic storage space. And then we have a second full entertainment center back here. This has the same TV that you find in the living room. And the previous owners added another uh, electric space heating fireplace back here in addition to the one in the living room plus the heat pump. So this RV has three electric heaters and gives you the ability to keep pretty much every room in this RV pretty comfortably warm unless it's going to be sub-freezing temperatures, in which case you want to kick on the furnace. It's pretty cool. But this TV directly across from that right there gives this RV two legitimate separate living rooms. But again, you could easily use this as something of an office area. It could be a bunkhouse. Uh, I, I mean, there's just no, there's really no limits to the different ways that you could put it together. And this is a bath and a half model. So what's kind of cool is next to each sleeping area is a toilet so that if anyone needs to use a bathroom at night, they quickly and easily can. That's porcelain and foot flush, just like the master bedroom. This is the same extra large, extra tall entry door as the main entry door. You see that light on the wall? Well, that's showing us right there that we've got one of the nicer, bigger Max Air vent fans still with a rain sensor, even back here. And if I take a peek over, you can see that you've got a full vanity and sink back here and sealed edge countertops. So it's got all the same treatments as, uh, you know, like either the main living room or the main bathroom. It's just back here where it's more convenient and you don't have to go trucking through that privacy door all the way across the RV to get to it. Upstairs now at our master bathroom as opposed to the rear den half bath. You see you've got good drawer space in here and there's a space for a wastebasket below that sink. And they actually gave you more of that sealed edge countertop stuff, but good counter space next to the adult size sink. It's not a small sink. It's actually a really big countertop. Now over here, we've got a seamless one piece uh, fiberglass shower with some upgraded shower head hardware, which a lot of folks who use the RVs quite a bit tend to do. Um, and we've also got all sorts of leg room in front of the toilet right here. Now, usually, that wall right there in Montana is where you'd find like a linen cabinet. But remember that your washer dryer cabinet kind of shares space with the kitchen pantry. That's actually the back of that cabinet right there. So they had to be careful what they did with it. This was built with the factory installed second air conditioner. So, uh, you know, you've got maximum cooling power in this RV. I believe it's 28,500 BTUs of cooling. Um, and the uh, uh, bed up here, we've got a 60 by 80 residential queen. This is one of the only Montanas, by the way, that cannot have a king bed. Um, in order to meet RV code, the RV couldn't be built any larger than this. So it had to be a queen bed. And that's also why they had to take the washer dryer prep out of the bedroom of this floor plan and put it downstairs. But what that means is that you've just got nothing messing up all of your uh, personal, you know, clothing storage space up here in this bedroom. And that three-tier dresser across from the bed, that's one of those other little Montana things. A lot of brands will do two drawers. They give you that third tier. And all of the original factory tronics, uh, tronics, electronics are obviously still present and accounted for. Everything in this RV is in good working order. It's clean. It's ready to go. This, this is just not the kind of thing that rolls through every single day. Just like the inside, the outside looks fantastic. There's a couple little variances here versus like a brand new 2020 362RD, for instance, but 
minor stuff and at a glance everything is all in great shape like our skin is gleaming this actually has CNC routed uh, you know machine precise sidewalls that's something that uh, the Montana's and uh, the fusion impact family at Keystone all share they have uh, every cut on the sidewall is precise within one thousandth of an inch just little things like that now this does have a six point uh, automatic leveling system a longer high country like this will have a six point not a four point system uh, zero degree rated has been for many many years Montana has been uh, properly I guess you could say seasonally insulated and rated since 05 uh, you know, of course, fully enclosed command center, as you expect on a big fifth wheel. Our battery disconnect, our solar prep, all that stuff is there. Now, this over here, I wanted to leave this here um, because I hadn't done this in the past, just to kind of show you. This is the step uh, that hooks onto the side of the trailer to get you up to that uh, half bath entry door. And it's a little bit different, but this removable more ride step right here allowed them to put that entry door directly above the wheel well. And what that allowed the Montana uh, designers to do was better engineer this for a better balance point so that you're going to enjoy smoother towing with less bucking and chucking. And just a quick look at that enclosed underbelly. But one of the things I wanted to show you here, the little detail things like the way that Montana still includes a nice little sewer hose caddy so you don't need to mix your black tank stuff up here with all of your freshwater stuff and dry cargo. Along with those like mirror-like reflective high gloss walls, which the fact that it still has that kind of shimmer and sheen, these folks had used it mostly to go back and forth to Illinois. They did clock one trip to Florida and back. They, uh, in their own words, used it for a mix of business and pleasure. They used the rear den as something of like an office at times. Um, the, uh, the RV is just in great shape. Frameless windows and that gleaming sidewall give it such a good eye appeal. And 13,000 pounds is not the lightest fifth wheel in the world, but considering this is, what, five slides? That's not bad considering how big this RV is. It is backup camera ready. The previous owners actually had a backup camera on it that they ported over to their new Fusion. Uh, two inch receiver hitch on the back here, so if you want to bring your long bike racks, you're perfectly able. And this does have backup lighting. When you shift into reverse, um, you can see the white section on that tail light, so that it gives you a little more light if you're using a backup camera or have a spotter, or you just don't want someone behind you to, to keep rolling forward when you're backing up, because obviously those are two things that don't play well. And I have always loved the look of this camp kitchen on this Montana. Aesthetically, I think it's just stunning. They they did something very different here. I like that clear glass door on that outside fridge. It's just not something you see a lot in the RV industry. Neither is including a microwave out here. And these are all rolled steel galvanil countertops. So if you don't know what that means, basically this is a metal countertop that, you know, it's basically, this is weatherproof. Now, you still have some uh, cabinet wood styles out here. I'm not saying leave this thing open in a rainstorm. I'm saying that you spill a drink on here, or if you set a drink on and it sweats and condensates, it's just not the end of the world. Now, you also have this microwave with, you know, this sort of storage above and around, but this is nice and wide open. So if you wanted to do something like add a griddle or anything out here, you could. There's a motion light down there so that you're not going to have a big old collection of bugs around this thing, but it'll kick on right when you're walking over to grab a drink, basically. And I like this uh, tempered glass stovetop cover that they have here so that you can use it as actual counter space when you need to, but it's there to cook also. Um, remember, you're like, you're looking at this going, uh, were, they took the steps off? No, the steps are removable. That's the step system that was in that front pass-through compartment. It just simply brackets right on there, and then it's super sturdy and stable. What's nice is that being one of those more ride type steps, it can go right above a wheel well. So, again, they could shift the axles back on this to make it tow nicer. But with the kids coming and going back here all day long, the whole RV doesn't tend to rock and roll around. And, of course, there is a deadbolt for that door. One, uh, well, a couple more little things, actually. By the main entry door here, they added one of those extended uh, our, uh, grab handles so that you can, you know, really get a hold of that thing the whole way up those four steps. And that is a taller entry door. A lot of RVs... Uh, people get all excited when they have a wider 30 inch door, which this has, but this also has a six and a half foot tall door. So it's a residential door height, double slam latches, double magnet holdbacks, more motion lighting, outside TV hookups, and a partridge in a pear tree. The only thing this RV lacks right now is uh, a new owner. <laughs> that's, that's really the only thing that this RV needs because 
It's late model, it's well kept, it could qualify for same as new RV finance because of its young age. It just needs you to pick up the phone or shoot us an email and say, hey, what's it take to take that one home? We'll make it happen. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping, everyone.